and welcome back to Matt's Workshop. This is part one of a three-part series where I'll be machining a T-slot lathe faceplate from a casting kit available through Metal Lathe Accessories. Faceplate will need to be threaded to fit the lathe spindle and as such I'll need a thread plug gauge to test the progress of the internal threading without removing the work from the lathe. The threaded plug gauge will also serve as a centering fixture later on. My lathe has a one and a half inch, eight threads per inch spindle. So with the power hacksaw, I'll slice off enough material for the job including plenty of extra stock for holding in the lathe's three-jaw chuck. Mounting the work piece in the three jaw chuck on the lathe and just tightening up the chuck. A little A bomb torque, I guess. The first thing to do, I need to face off the end of the bar. I'll actually face out both ends here. trying to clean up the saw marks and get an even cut across the face. I started to turn the outside diameter, but I was getting some chatter. Um, I have uh, too much stick out here, but to be on the safe side, since I have a lot of material to remove, I'm going to center drill uh, the end of the bar uh, to run the live center. Got our hole. Looks good. Move the tail stock out of the way. And get the drill bit put away and the chuck taken off. My disorganized collet rack and accessories. Okay, we've got a live center here. Pop that in. it up. Okay, 
Okay, let's see how the turning operation goes now. Yeah, I can tell right away that with the live center in place, uh, it's a much more rigid setup. Now you can see that I'm running a really slow feed rate on the carriage. This is a 96 tooth gear on the lead screw. in about the slowest direct drive speed rate. Okay, we've got the material removed um, down to the size to start threading. I'm going to do a practice scratch pass here. Just make sure I'm coordinated enough to do the threading with one hand. So I'm holding the camera with the other. Okay, so... I'll advance the cross slide back to zero, advance the compound at the 29 and a half degrees, and as the threading dial comes around to the number, I'll engage the lead screw, half nuts. There we go. Check to make sure the gear ratio is set up correctly for the eight threads per inch. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Continue threading as usual until we're at the correct depth and we can do some test fits with I've got a faceplate and a few other accessories that I could thread onto this uh, to check to verify the fit. So the first couple passes I'm only advancing the compound oh I don't know five thou at a time just to uh, get it started correctly and then I'll take much deeper cuts as it goes. And at the end of the pass, I'm backing out the cross slide a couple turns, then I'll always advance it that way. I take out the backlash when I'm ready to start the next pass. So I don't know if you can see it here. A little out of frame, but right there I'll back it out probably uh, two full turns at least. And then here I'll bring it back to the same mark. I just use zero. I reset the dial on the cross slide. So I just go back to zero every time. And for the advancing, I'll just use the compound every time. Again, this is a standard V-thread, so 29 and a half degrees is the angle of the compound. And I use fishtail gauge, threading gauge, to verify that my tool was set up perpendicular and uh, in line. And since threading takes a while, I have sped up this video.
being cast iron and very easy to machine, it appears. I am doing this, uh, all this threading dry. Actually, all of the turning and facing and threading has all been done dry. What you see, I'm just using the brush to dust off the work and the tool bit just to see where I am. I don't want to thread too far or miss the end of the threads. This gray iron makes a very fine dust powder. It just gets on everything, so I have to totally clean the lathe when I'm done with this operation. I'll back out the tailstock and slide the carriage back as well. And I'm just going to run a lathe file over the tops of the threads to knock the burrs off and then give it a little bit of a chamfer on the end just for test fitting. I'll add a little bit more generous chamfer when I'm done. Feel the burrs are gone. Let's see if we can get some of that dust out of the rag. So the lead screw is still on, still synced up. That way, if I need to make another pass, engage the half nuts and that'll work. Okay, this is threading on well. Actually, off camera, I did a couple test fits already and snuck up on the final dimension here. I'll need to add a little undercut at the end just so everything fits perfectly. For example, that Jacob's chuck has different depth. The thread is the same diameter, but the thread engagement length is different than this little drive dog blade. So as long as it fits both of these, it should be fine. No wiggle. And this is a close-up of what the thread looks like. 